we are continuing our study of the correlation between Romans 6 through 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and Paul's doctrine of the resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Remember now, Paul said that the resurrection would be when sin, the sting of death, would be overcome. Thus, to deal with sin is to deal with death. You know, on a very, very primary level, I've raised this question before. I hope you'll think about it. I hope you'll ponder it. If to deal with sin is to deal with death, then if I today, as a child of God, objectively have the forgiveness of sin, what would that mean? That would mean that I'm not dead. That would mean that I do not die. That's why Jesus said, if a man keep my saying, he will never die. Now, isn't it pretty clear that Jesus wasn't talking about biological death there? Uh, in, our, in future videos, we're going to be talking about life and death in, in the Gospel of John specifically as it relates to resurrection in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I know that this is going to extend our study of resurrection, but it's so important. I mean, it's absolutely critical to grasp this. Okay, that's enough for now. Now, back to Romans chapter 6. In our last video, we focused on verse 5 where Paul says, If we have been united with Christ or together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. I pointed out to you that the word likeness here eliminates any idea that Paul is talking about physicality. We have the physical death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, to be sure. But the question is, is that the focus of Paul's discussion? He is not presenting a one-to-one -one precision. He is talking about a likeness. Did Jesus die physically? Absolutely. Was Jesus physically buried? Absolutely. Was Jesus physically raised? Undeniably. But Paul says... When you were buried with him in baptism, you were buried or you joined with his death. Well, we weren't joined to Jesus' physical death. Because, that is to say, we didn't die physically. Likewise, he was buried in the ground. We were buried in water. A form, a picture, if you please, a representation, if you please, but it still wasn't a physical burial precisely like Jesus's. Just like Jesus was biologically raised from physical death. Paul says, you were raised in the likeness of his death. Not biological newness of life. Hey, look, if Paul's talking about one-to-one, -one, then when a person came out of the water or comes out of the water of baptism, they ought to be living forever. I mean, after all, we are told that our resurrection will be exactly like Christ. And we are told that he was raised in an immortal, immortal, uh, immortal glorified body, which is false. But be that as it may, if, if we take Paul seriously here, when he says, okay, here is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, you were buried just like him, or you died just like him, you were buried just like him, you were raised just like him, then that should mean that when we came up out of the waters of baptism, we have a, a, a transformed, immortal, incorruptible biological body. Does anybody believe that? No. Because the undeniable reality is you and I are going to die biologically even if we are baptized. It's undeniable, right? And by the way, I've got to take just a moment of a diversion here. I've made the point that Romans 5 through 8 is directly parallel with 1 Corinthians 15. And I'm focusing here on Paul's discussion of baptism as the likeness of, of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, as Paul's discussion of the resurrection of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. After, he, after all, he says, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be, future tense, in the likeness of his resurrection. Well, look, some people say, look, Preston, that's, you know, your claim that, 
1 Corinthians 15 and Romans chapters 5 through 8 are directly parallel as false. Paul doesn't even mention baptism in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm sorry, folks. That's a really horrible, really horrible hermeneutic. If we're going to take that position, Paul says, if we have been buried with him in the likeness of his death, we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. So if you're going to say, well, look, Paul doesn't mention the word or, or Roman, he doesn't talk about baptism in 1 Corinthians 15. Therefore, 1 Corinthians 15 is not what he's talking about in Romans chapters 5 through 8. Well, you know what that means? That means when Paul speaks of the resurrection that was still future to him, that he's not talking about physical resurrection. Hello? You see that? Let me reiterate that. Let me drive that point home because you got to catch the power of it. If it's the case that because Paul doesn't mention baptism in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that means that he cannot be talking about Romans chapters 5 through 8, and in the context of baptism, that therefore means that the resurrection that was still future to Paul when he wrote Romans chapter 6, verse 5, it was still future to him. We shall also be in the likeness of, of his resurrection. That means that that resurrection cannot be the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15. That means you have two resurrections future to Paul. The, the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 and the resurrection of Romans chapter 6. You want to create that doctrine? Do we really want to go down that road? Okay, if 1 Corinthians 15 is physical resurrection and Romans chapter 6 is not the resurrection of 1 Corinthians 15 because Paul doesn't mention the word uh, baptism in 1 Corinthians 15, then what kind of resurrection was still future to Paul in Romans chapter 6? Do you see the, you see the weird distorted result of that hermeneutic that says, oh, well, look, baptism is not mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15. Therefore, therefore Paul's talking about a different, a, a different life, death, resurrection in Romans chapters five through eight. Nope, just won't work. I'm sorry, folks. It just will not work. If you're going to take that position, you are creating two future resurrections from Paul's perspective, and that's not true. Okay, thank you so very, very much. We'll have more on the flip side, so we will see you there.